This episode of Proper English is brought to you by cats, the difference between in the end and at the end, and the idiom, let the cat out of the bag. You blew my mind last week, Ali. Oh, blimey. What did I do this time, Dave? Well, you asked me how many phrasal verbs using animals I thought there were. Oh, yeah. And it hadn't even occurred to me that there were any. Yeah, there were around 20, I think. And absolutely loads of English expressions and idioms using animals. So, an animal-based episode might be good. Well, then, we have to start with Millhouse, don't we? Why not? In fact, let's make the whole episode about cats. Regular listeners will have heard us mention our cat, Millhouse, a few times. Yes, she's even managed to meow her way into one of these conversations in the past and you couldn't edit her out. It's true. So, let's start with meow. That's the sound that British cats make. Meow can be spelt two ways, either M-I-A-O-W or... M-E-O-W, for brevity. We've had Millhouse since she was a baby cat, known as a kitten. To be cute, people also talk about kitties and kitty cats. Millhouse is the third cat we've had as a couple. First was Spider. Oh, he was so beautiful. He was. A long-haired ginger cat. Male cats are called Toms. They are. Everybody loved Spider. Even people who didn't like cats loved Spider. Mm. He had a charming personality and a very loud purr. (laughs) Then came Webster. We gave her a boy's name because the vet said she was a boy. But then that turned out to be wrong. But as cats probably aren't very hung up about gender, she kept the name. She did. Now Webster took a long time to learn to like us. And people in general, to be honest, didn't you? Mm. We got her as a rescue cat. She was born on the streets of Urn Bay in Kent. (laughs) And so she wasn't really very affectionate or friendly at first. No, although eventually she liked to lie on my hair when I was asleep. Cute. Yes, and quite flattering. But, unfortunately, she also likes to dig her claws into my scalp as a sign of affection. Acupuncture. (laughs) Catch a puncture. (laughs) Then, much to Webster's annoyance, we got Millhouse. (coughs) Millhouse is a grand old lady now, 18 years old. And she flew on the plane with us to live here in Portugal. (coughs) So, a little bit of cat vocabulary. What, you mean like... (laughs) (laughs) Let's stick to English. (laughs) Where we have hands and feet, cats have paws. They do. Where we have fingernails or toenails, they have claws. They do. Their hair collectively is known as fur. And this is the same for furry mammals generally. But the specially sensitive hairs that they have sticking out beside their mouth are called whiskers. The vibration that cats make and that you can sometimes hear is a purr as I mentioned earlier. And the verb is also to purr. Although they can eat some vegetables, their main source of food is meat, which makes them carnivores. Cats are natural hunters. They follow their prey. And the verb that we use for that is stalking. Yeah. When they attack, they usually pounce on the poor creature. A pounce is a kind of jump. As carnivores, they spend much of their time sleeping like lions. Unluckily for us, most of this sleeping takes place in the day. Mm. Millhouse often wakes us up to be fed or for a bit of company. Yeah, cats are nocturnal, whereas us humans are diurnal. We love her though. We do. And now it's time for What's the Difference? What's the Difference? This one is inspired by Rim, my Turkish student living in London. She asked, what's the difference between in the end and at the end? Right. Good question. Simply put, in the end means finally. At the end is to do with location and I guess time. Mm. Yeah. So we talked about lots of places to visit and in the end we chose the castle. I tried really hard to learn how to juggle but in the end I gave up. It was too hard. And I was better anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. At the end might be located in time 
or space. We can say, I haven't seen that TV series yet. Don't tell me what happens at the end. We must remember we have to pay the bills at the end of this month. Oh, that's a miserable one. At the end of the concert, we'll have to hurry to get the last train. The school is easy to find. It's at the end of the street. How about a few cat facts? The British are famous for being animal lovers. It's estimated that almost half of British households have a pet. There are around 9 million dogs and 8 million cats. That's a busy house. (laughs) (laughs) Did you know... Cats share 95.6% of their genetic makeup with tigers. I did not know that. Mm. How long do you think the oldest cat lived? Mm. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, a cat in Texas lived until it was 38 years old. No way. Way. Goodness me. Yeah. You already know the ancient Egyptians loved cats. They did. They had a god, Bast, Uh the cat goddess. Okay, but did you know that when a person's pet cat died, the owner would shave off their eyebrows? I did not know that. That is a very strange custom, I have to say. My mate Tink used to shave his eyebrows. (coughs) Millhouse has just discovered the television, hasn't she, Ali? She has. And, you know, I have absolutely no recollection of her showing any interest in the TV until the last few months. No, that's true. It started when I was showing you some cat videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But rather than watching them on the laptop, I put them on the television. And Millhouse was sitting between us and became more and more interested. We were watching Rachel and Jun's YouTube channel, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, their cats are just gorgeous, aren't they? They are. If you like cats, you should watch them. Yeah. Anyway, we were watching them, and Millhouse suddenly sat up, very tall and wide-eyed. We had to turn it off after a few minutes, didn't we? (laughs) She was getting quite upset and unsettled by having those huge-looking cats in our lounge. Oh, (laughs) it was quite funny, though. (laughs) Oh, I felt sorry for her. (laughs) Then, a few weeks ago, I discovered another fabulous YouTube channel from Cornell Labs, where they live-stream from a bird feeding table by a lake somewhere in middle America. And you can see stunning birds that we'd never see here in Europe. Millhouse was gobsmacked, wasn't she? (laughs) She was. She went right up close to the screen, absolutely fascinated, and then pounced at the screen. So now you need to watch that on your laptop or she's going to end up damaging the TV, I think. Uh, Yeah, you're probably right. But it was good to see that even though she's an old lady, she's still got the huntress in her. Yeah. As we said earlier, there are an awful lot of expressions in English that reference cats. Does that mean it's time for idiom of the week? Idiom of the week? If you let the cat out of the bag, you reveal a secret, maybe inadvertently. Its use seems to go right back to the late 1700s. And why? Uh Well, as is almost always the case, there are different ideas about the origin. Uh I like this version. Merchants used to sell pigs or other animals at the market, and they'd put them in a sack or a bag for the buyer to take home. That would be a nightmare for a cow. (laughs) However... (laughs) The seller might sneakily put a cat in when the purchaser was distracted. Ah. Later, when the victim opened the bag and a cat came out, they realised they'd been duped. Blimey! A few more expressions we have using cats. While the cat's away, the mice won't play. Yeah, not too tricky to work out. When the boss isn't around, some people will take advantage of the situation. Or, when a parent leaves a child unsupervised, they might get up to mischief. Look what the cat dragged in. Rude. (laughs) It's an insult. If you think about how some poor animal looks as the cat brings it home, it's probably a bit of a mess. Oh, yeah. So, it insults the way someone looks, or you can use it, to describe an unwelcome visitor. Oh, look what the cat dragged in. (laughs) Now then, a favourite of mine, one that I haven't used for a while, is one that I got from Stephen King, actually. 
as nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. (laughs) Really creates a picture in your mind, doesn't it? It does, yeah. And here we are, at the end... Aha! At the end! ...of another episode of Proper English. As always, we hope you've had fun listening in on our conversation. And whether you're a new listener or a regular subscriber, why not get in touch with us? You can email us at Proper English, or one word, at sapo.pt. Or you can ask us questions on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook if you have them in your country. And don't forget to tell everyone you know about us. Friends, family, anyone who's studying or learning English. And make sure you like this episode and leave us a nice review. Please. And subscribe to us on your favourite podcast app. So... Until next time, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me too. And thank you for listening to Proper English. English.